I'm Carl Baldassar with another classic rock riff review for you. And today we're going back to April of 1975 and the album Toys in the Attic. And the song is Sweet Emotion by the band Aerosmith. You want to talk about guitar riffs? Well, this song has got them. Not one, not two, not three, but four. Count them four great guitar riffs in one song. Sweet Emotion was the band's breakthrough single, and it was their first top 40 hit, and it climbed to number 35 on the Billboard charts in 1975. And this song really made them become headliners. And I remember seeing them in, with 70,000 of my closest Cleveland friends at Cleveland Municipal Stadium for what we used to call the World Series of Rock. The song was written by Steven Tyler and the bass player Tom Hamilton, and you really got to hand it to them. They came up with a really great grooving song with a lot of cool riffs in it. And I want to give a shout out to the producer, Jack Douglas, who's one of my favorite producers, and he did their second album, Get Your Wings, which also sounded fantastic. Riff number one. It's the most familiar riff because it's the verse riff, and it goes like this. <laughs> So what's really cool about it is, is, is the syncopation in it, where we've got one, one and, then we have a two E, we have a sixteenth note in there, so we go. So that syncopation really makes it groove. And um, what I really think is interesting about the riff is that it's not over stylized. They're not like bending a lot of notes there. And in fact, when you get to the G note, you don't want to bend it. The, my tendency would want to bend this note. You know what I mean? But they don't put any of that styling on it. It's really straight, kind of chunk and syncopated riff. So. so there's no bending on that G, and I just think that's really deliberate in how they keep it nice and clean that way. Now riff number two is this amazing, soaring, syncopated chromatic line, and it goes like this. <laughs> Right? That's so cool, you know, it's really chromatic. And the two guitar players actually do it in fifths, so you get a little bit of this kind of feel. You get that kind of sound. So I love the two guitars, the way they orchestrate them in the band. And what's really cool about that riff, too, is they're adding these little 16th, 16th notes at the end. So you got and a little push on the end there. They don't do it the same way every time, actually, but I do like that little 16th note push on the end. Now riff number three is the intro of the song. When they come back to it, you know, it has the vocal refrain of sweet emotion, and Joe Perry is using the talk box where he's mouthing the words sweet emotion with the guitar coming through the talk box into his microphone. And the riff is really subtle, okay? So it's tucked into the mix, and it's a really nice contrast from the heavy banging first two riffs. You've got this really nice sort of textured little riff that's kind of subtle in the mix, and it kind of goes like this. <laughs> Really, really subtle and gentle and very lightly played, but it's got a great bounce and a great groove. Again, they're using their syncopation. In this band, I just should just stop and just say, they are really made up of a lot of syncopation, a lot of backbeat, and it gives them their sound through really their entire career. Really heavy backbeats, really cool syncopation on the guitars. So one thing I want to point out on this third riff while they're doing it, I've seen a lot of people play it on the internet, and sometimes they'll play it with a what they think is a G to an A, so they're going G to A. And it's not that. It's actually they're using a frame of an A dominant seventh chord. They have the A, and they have the flat seven, G, together. And they're playing those two notes, but that's the frame. When I talk about a frame, I'm talking about, think about a house, where the basement is the A, the root, and the roof of the house is the uh, dominant seventh on top, the flat seven. And they're playing those two notes of the frame, and it implies a dominant seventh chord. They're not playing a G chord there. They're playing an A seventh, but with two notes. So versus not doing that G. No, it's A7 going to A. Can 
you hear that subtle difference? But it's really, really important to get that right because that really gives it that great flavor. And the other thing I like about that third riff is that it foreshadows what's going to come up in the fourth power outro riff. I'll explain that to you in a minute. So riff number four, the last riff of the song is the outro riff, and we're back to slamming guitar rock riffs here. And I like how they bend into it with an F sharp, which is kind of the relative minor of the key that we're in, because we're kind of in the key of A here. So they come into it with this. and they just keep that going and they have guitar solos over the end of that. And what's really cool about that fourth riff is actually it's playing off of that quiet third riff. So let me put them together for you so you can hear them. So the third riff is like this. And the fourth riff is. You hear that? So he's taking the, the first riff on the, the third riff, which is. And the fourth riff is. Exactly the same figures, but they change the texture of it because they're playing the third riff really quietly and cleanly, and then they're playing the fourth riff really rocking in, in E, and the third riff is in A. So what I like about that as a composer is how it makes it coherent. They kind of hold it together, because if they just came up with a fourth altogether different riff, I don't think the song would hold together. So having the kind of the, the third riff kind of shake hands and suggest the fourth riff really makes it all kind of stand together and make sense. Okay, so let me play all the riffs for you back to back. Here we go. Riff number one. Right? Riff number two. Right? Riff number three. And then riff number four. <laughs> there you have four great riffs in one song. So when it comes to Aerosmith, man, you gotta really hand it to these guys. They're really good players and songwriters, and they're just riff and hook masters. And when you take the whole band together from Steve, Steven Tyler's kind of rhythmic singing and just the guitars and the bass and drum grooves, man, they really are a very unique sounding band. And this song from 1975 for me, brings back a lot of great memories because I was 15 just turning 16 years old and that 15 to 16 year old time frame in all of our lives is really when music gets cemented into your the soundtrack of your life and what I'd like to ask as I, as I close here is to maybe suggest some songs when you were 15 and 16 that music that you heard that just got riveted into your memory and you hear it and you can remember everything about what was going on what car you were driving what clothes you were wearing all of that stuff Share those ideas with me, what music you were hearing when you were 15 and 16, and maybe I can cover those in my next classic rock riff review for you. I'm Carl Baldessar. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Leave me a comment as I asked, and also just thank you for my new subscribers. I really am grateful to it, and thank you for all of you who have been sticking with me through this journey.